Hello everyone, my name is Paul Lopez. I will be presenting on Hoovervilles, what they were, uh, the impact of the Great Depression on the American people, also focusing in on minorities, veterans, and how our country was able to get out of the Great Depression uh, with the New Deal. So what were Hoovervilles? Um, Hoovervilles are a disillusioned term for the rapid homelessness taking place during the Great Depression. Over 20% of the workforce was out of jobs and ended up becoming homeless. A good majority of them ended up becoming homeless. Um, this led to people needing a place to stay. So they pretty much built these pop-up areas and camps where it was made out of a lot of wood, a lot of cloth, a lot of sheet metal, literally anything you would find in a dump, they would throw a house together so that they could stay warm. Um, most, A majority of these houses that would pop up were from, were in very cold cities such as New York and Chicago. Um, so this was like a way for them to stay and keep warm. There were uh, Hoovervilles and or these uh, exponentially growing slums um, in Los Angeles, California, and also San Francisco, California. Um, we have a picture here uh, showing just kind of the destitute, like, kind of like post-apocalyptic looking thing, but this is actually something from our past um, that people were not being taken care of, uh, especially on the governmental level, being able to see that people, you know, needed a place to stay. Um, yeah. So the next part um, that I would like to focus on is the effects on minority communities. So in Chicago, African Americans made up about 4% of the population and accounted for 16% of the unemployment in the city. So white owners of stores would choose to lay off African Americans first before their white counterparts, uh, making it all the more harder um, for the black community to survive and hold on um, to just, you know, being an American citizen. Like, it's difficult when you don't have a job and when you're the first one out the door, like, that's more time for you to be suffering without a stable form of income. Um, I know personally, when my parents have been laid off in the past, it has been uh, very fearful and uh, insecure time, especially because uh, we live paycheck to paycheck, having a home, um, but not to the extent of living on the streets in this homeless nature that was taking place in the Hoovervilles. Um, the next uh, community that I would like to focus on is the uh, Latino American or Mexican American groups. Um, there is this uh, policy called the repatriation drives where 1.8 million people were deported to Mexico, 60% uh, of them being citizens of, a, of Mexican descent. So that means that there was either first generation or second generation uh, Mexican Americans living um, in America that were getting shoved out, exiled to Mexico, um, rather than being repatriated. Uh, this was a um, clear uh, descent of um, white America first from the federal government, um, just tying it up in a bow and using uh, a different name to cover their butts um, so that they wouldn't come off as like uh, being unjust or, or being, uh, not right. Um, this is, this is not a good thing to do. Uh, but it did affect a lot of jobs. Like the, it ranged from people in California, right next to the border, all the way up until Michigan, um, and different parts of the Midwest. Um, there's not as much of a Latino population on the East coast, but there were still people that got deported from, there, but they're not getting, sorry, repreciated. I can't even say the word again. Um, but yeah, that, um, that was a couple of the injustices that came up surrounding homelessness and unemployment during the Great Depression and with Hoovervilles. 
So the next group that I would like to focus on, and last of the groups I'd like to focus on, are the veterans. The veterans of the Great War. So the Great War was fought in 1916 to 1919. Uh, kind of the... Um, general statement is they you know fought the war and then we kind of had this the roaring 20s which was a time of prosperity um so there was a group of men of about 10,000 to 25,000 men who uh, were veterans with their wives and children in 1932 um, that were protesting to get their vouchers from the federal government um they were exposed to receive a thousand dollars um given to them in a voucher uh in 1945 um which was another 12 years away 13 years away at this point if i can do quick math in my head um but in actuality um they protested it um the federal government heard them um, but they weren't going to give them the full amount. So they were sent home after a few days of protesting and they received $500 instead of a thousand dollars. Um, which I mean, it's not like terrible. I mean, $500 back then would get you probably through about a month, um, month and a half worth of, uh, just living expenses in general, housing, food, um, uh, needs like uh, health care, child care, different things like that. But when everyone is laid off, it's kind of hard. You're kind of always with your kids. Um, but yeah, so that that uh, that's what happened with the, the bonus army. Um, really sad to see uh, men who risk their lives uh, not, you know, um, being able to support themselves because of uh, the collapse um, of the Great Depression. Lastly, uh, I would like to introduce President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He ran for president as a Democratic progressive, campaigning on the New Deal uh, um, as his main platform of getting the nation uh, back up and running and healthy again. Um, so the New Deal uh, was between 1933 and 1939, uh, which took action to bring about immediate economic relief as well as reform vastly increasing the scope of the federal government's activities uh, a couple of these activities was industry agriculture finance water power labor um yeah so uh to, to focus in on a couple financing um a big reason why the great depression was the great depression was the banks um there were these things called bank runs in the midwest and then it spread all the way across the city where people would just be asking to withdraw money um but that wasn't necessarily the most helpful um because what banks do is when you give them your money they take that money and then they invest it in secure things but what happened was is that the banks keep investing to where they don't actually have a supply um the federal government did but herbert hoover didn't open it up so uh with the new deal they re uh focused that so that financing would be stable and if there was ever something to come up like this again which would happen in 2008 with the crisis is that we were that the federal government was able to bail out the banks um even though that some people can look at that as a bad thing um, I personally think it, it helped, uh, understanding and learning from our history of the great depression to, uh, modern day problems and issues. Um, the next thing was, uh, next thing I wanted to focus on was, um, labor. Uh, I think this also came up with, uh, social security. So you know who you are and that's why we keep our, um, cards very safe. Um, and then, I mean, in direct response to the Hoovervilles, uh, there were more housing initiatives taking place, easier to build, um, so that people could have a stable location um, to live. So, yeah, that that's, that's about it to wrap it up. Um, thank you for letting me share, and I will show the next slide 
uh, for our video. Cool. And then this is just where I got all the information from, a couple of the pictures. Um, yeah, thank you for letting me share.